Thank you, Sir Brian. That was as thoughtful a, a presentation and background for, for the meeting as, uh, as I, anyone could have hoped for. So I'm most grateful to you. Uh, this is not an address, but simply an opportunity to thank you for coming, uh, to, thank, to thank Graham uh, for taking the burden on. Uh, he mentioned the, the Beatles song. This is a, a significant meeting in terms of the perspective uh, of having been to the previous meetings. It's, it's uh, the most heterogeneous meeting. It's the meeting with the most people from, from different countries. And uh, I hope that's a sign of, of uh, great interest. I had the, uh, it was my good fortune six years ago to, uh, to be in Geneva and to meet Daewon Choi, uh, who whose idea was uh, to have uh, a meeting sponsored by the UN dealing with online dispute resolution. Uh, that was very uh, prescient on, on his part. Uh, the first meeting, Graham was at the first long, uh, we can work it out. The one that occurs to me more often than that is help. <laughs> and, uh, and we received a lot of help. Uh, a, a lot of a lot of uh, sponsors, uh, particularly uh, Mike Lind and the ADR group, um, not only in financial support but putting together uh, the packets that you received this morning, the the CDs, uh, really everything. Um, disputes, uh, dispute online dispute resolution is increasingly, I think, being employed for. Uh, as Sir Brian mentioned, for traditional kinds of disputes. Uh, possibly the reason I became interested in, in the link between technology and dispute resolution was that uh, it became obvious to me at some point that, that all of this technology was creating a whole new world of disputes. Uh, and someone mentioned the other day to me that they considered disputes a growth industry. Well, if we have a growth industry of disputes and we have uh, places, not simply India, but Mohammed Wahab told me yesterday that in Egypt the longest cases, or typical case, takes 15 years uh, to get from judge beginning to judgment. And then in, in the United States, uh, it's not 15 years and maybe it's not 10 years, but it's, uh, it's a, an excruciatingly long time if, if, if you really need, as I said, help. <laughs> Uh, I think this is a, a significant meeting in terms of the perspective uh, of having been to the previous meetings. It's, it's uh, the most heterogeneous meeting. It's the meeting with the most people from, from different countries. And uh, I hope that's a sign of, of uh, great interest. I had the, uh, it was my good fortune six years ago to, uh, to be in Geneva and to meet Daewon Choi, uh, who whose idea was uh, to have uh, a meeting sponsored by the UN dealing with online dispute resolution. Uh, that was very uh, prescient on, on his part. Uh, the first meeting, Graham was at the first meeting, and he was telling me last night he wasn't even sure how he came to be at that first meeting. Uh, but it was probably by word of mouth. And uh, for this meeting, uh, many of you are here because you learned of this. Uh, not from word of mouth, but by uh, from 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 online resources. Uh, the the one uh, unfortunate occurrence uh, today is that day one is is not here to be with us. Uh, very unfortunately, uh, three days ago, his mother had a heart attack, and um, uh, and she is not here, and he's not here virtually. But he did uh, ask me to read some remarks to you um, briefly, which which I will. Uh, do right now. Uh, distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to welcome you to the fifth annual forum on online dispute resolution hosted by the University of Liverpool in collaboration with the United Nations Economic and Social Commission for Asia and the Pacific. As you know, ODR is an important area as it is becoming a priority for governments eager to promote e-commerce and technological development. ODR serves to build trust in online and cross-border commercial activities through the smooth resolution of disputes that could arise from these activities. ODR is reducing the friction cost associated with electronic commerce and encouraging its growth. ODR can contribute to a more open and non-discriminatory trading system. The key targets 
of the Millennium Development Goals approved by the United Nations General Assembly. Yet beyond providing viable solutions to the outstanding legal issues linked to the increased use of the Internet for business, I envision a novel and deeper role emerging for ODR as an agent of change to stimulate and accelerate structural and judiciary reforms in developing countries. This would enable their legal systems to stay up to date with the advancement of technology so that they could fully benefit from the information society. Distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, paragraph 13 of the Geneva Plan of Action of the World Summit on Information Society encourages, quote, the ongoing work in the area of effective dispute resolution systems, notably alternative dispute resolution, which can provide, promote settlement of disputes, unquote. And the WSIS went further as paragraph 36 of the Tunis Commitment states that the member states, quote, value the potential of information and communications technologies to promote peace and to prevent conflict, which inter alia negatively affects achieving development goals, unquote. We can thus consider ODR as a tool not just for economic dispute resolution, but as a tool for peace, health, and social development. Government ICT policies will therefore need to have ODR not only to advance the internet economy, but more generally to serve as a tool to combat and bridge the justice divide through e-justice. The challenge now is to shape these new capabilities so that they can work in harmony with and not in opposition to the social processes at work in the physical world. Governments also have a role in helping the development of norms and standards for ODR. This translates into reasoning at the outset that the United Nations has an important role to play in shaping the development of global ODR. It will be a catalyst for the effective implementation of ODR around the world as one of the tools to achieve the internationally agreed development goals, including the objectives of the Millennium Declaration. Distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, today's meeting in Liverpool has a particular significance for the global ODR community. Indeed, our ODR forum has completed a journey similar to the Basto da Gama, traveling halfway around the globe. The journey started in Geneva, proceeding to Melbourne, anchored in Cairo, and now culminates in our meeting here in Liverpool, which celebrates its 800 years of foundation. In December this year, the next ODR forum will be held in Hong Kong, is particularly timely as ODR is already playing an important and increasing role in Asia and the Pacific. The region is home to more than 60% of the world's population, and its e-commerce and online activities are growing fast. <coughs> in the Asia and Pacific region, ODR has an enhanced role as an empowerment tool for rural and poor people who have little access to dispute resolution by other means. In return, the rest of the world will benefit as the next generation of online dispute resolution systems emerge from Asia and the Pacific that will reflect cultural diversity of the region, its unique socio-political textures, and the specificity of its ICT, more mobile phone oriented than PC oriented. Thus the Hong Kong meeting will learn and benefit a lot from this Liverpool meeting. Distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, I am confident that this forum will be a tremendous success and significantly contribute to the advancement of ODR through discussions on current challenges, best practices, and technological innovations. UNESCAP stands ready to support the forum in its goal to develop ODR systems, which can contribute to the achievement of the Millennium Development Goals and the vision of the World Summit on the Information Society. Finally, my special thanks go to the organizers of this meeting, who have committed and dedicated themselves for this new journey. While Vasco da Gama was traveling with Lex Mercatoria some 500 years ago, we are navigating with Lex Odiaria. On this charter journey, we may be scripting a new chapter in cyberspace. Thank you. Well, I thank all of you for coming, and uh, I hope we have a lot of opportunities over the next uh, two days uh, to interact and learn from each other. I'm sure there is a, a huge amount that we can learn from each other. And uh, it's, it will be nice to meet a, a lot of new people.